Pickle! Hit that area sign. It's time for money. Monday morning fallout. Of course, when we overreact to the football weekend, and there is plenty, a plenty, to overreact to. Let's start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one, surprisingly unsurprising. Across the Texas high school football landscape, there were, I would say, not many surprises last week. No. That's n not too bad. That in and of itself is rather remarkable. For example, I went 24 and 4 on my playoff picks. Yeah. I went 24 and 4 That's on my impressive. playoff picks. That's impressive. And one of those was a spite pick because I, sp I picked Blum to beat May <laughs> and they damn near did it. They went in overtime. Went overtime and lost in the semifinal. Good season, Blum. Um, so the ones that I missed were I had Corpus Christi Miller over Austin LBJ, but I think everybody pretty much assumed that was going to be em. total pick a total game. pick 'em type game. Absolutely. LBJ made plays. We'll talk about them in a moment. Uh, I had Malakoff over Mount Vernon. That was probably the biggest surprise of the weekend. Yes. Was Mount Vernon – uh, beating one of the hottest teams in the state in Malakoff. And so mm -hmm. Mount Vernon, the Region 2 champions in 3A Division 1. And the other one was Cristoval. I had Cristoval over Fall City, which is funny because if you look back <laughs> on my graphic, on the pre or the pre playoff graphics, mm -hmm. I had Fall City. So did I really miss it? Who knows? No, yeah, I no, I had to, I legitimately had to go back in and change that graphic because I was like, Hang on. Did yeah. I type that wrong? And I went back no. and looked at your script, and I was like, no, he just said it well, wrong. Well, I, th I, think it, I think it speaks to the fact that I think we – I think my – I had I had predicted in my brain, and there's no way to verify this except getting inside my brain, which – No one wants to do that. To do that. <laughs> but I, I thought I thought we're probably going to have a Cristobal Fall City uh, regional final, and that just speaks to the fact of, like, what a close matchup, matchup. I expected. Oh, yeah. And then the other one is Blum. I had Blum over May. So, in a lot of ways, it was, and, and that's not to say that I'm the ultimate arbiter of all things Texas High School. Well, what I'm saying is oh, that it was that. relatively, it was relatively chalky. Yes. I would say that, for the most part, favorites won. Now, that's not to say that they weren't in trouble, right? Um, for example, Shiner had all sorts of trouble with Furio, mm -hmm. but they ended up pulling out a win. McKamey jumped out like 18 nothing on Wellington before Wellington uh, mounted a big comeback. Elysian Fields uh, got their heart ripped out by, uh, by Wascombe. Salina got their heart ripped out by Graham, right? They were close games. But across the entire landscape, I don't necessarily think that we have a ton of surprising state, at least at this point, based on the information we had coming into the week, surprising state semifinalists. Yeah. For example, if you take a look, we have five first-time state semifinalists. Mm -hmm. uh, Austin LBJ, let's see if I can rattle these off. Austin LBJ, Lindale. Lano, Mount Vernon, and was it Hallettsville? Or no, no, they no. were the one that Hallettsville were made in nineteen seventy six. Seventy six, yeah. okay. Uh, but there was another one who I am whose name is escaping me. At you the put it moment. on Twitter. Timpson. Timpson. Oh, Timpson is in her first Maximum season. Bears. Maximum Bears. The and so really across the state of Texas, I'm not sure that you had this like landscape shift. And I'll be honest, generally speaking, you don't have a ton of upsets in the semifinals. Part of that is because the in, – in the next round, I should say. Part of that is because at this point all the teams are really good and there's just not any overwhelming favorites. I can think of two that I think might be considered overwhelming favorites. Mm -hmm. But, like, overall, you don't have a ton of upsets. And so, really, in a lot of ways, we may be past the point of major surprises. Right. I think the other thing is that we've all adjusted our expectations so that we all know that all the teams that are alive right now are all really good. Some may be slightly better than others, right. but like they're not. They're, there's no. There's no Cinderella at this point. Even like, even if we didn't pick Jim Ned to come out of Region One, mm -hmm. at the this way point, that they've been playing, you can't the, argue against it. At this point, it's hard to call them a, a Cinderella. Well, and I think too, it doesn't help the matter this week of the fact of just how crazy the previous week was before like it wasn't just one or two big upsets it was like the week the previous week was upset after upset after upset for the entirety of Friday so then you go into this mm -hmm. week and there's like the one or two and it's like oh man that's not near as much of a banger as it was you know the week before so that's thought number one surprisingly unsurprising. thought number two much better and that is a reference to the college football world. 
If you remember Monday Morning Fallout last week, that's the third one. I wondered about um, that. The college football last week Much in the state better. of Texas <laughs> stunk. Last week it just it just it it stunk. Oh, it was it awful. stunk on ice. It was ugly. It was really it was it, it's not that everybody lost. It was how they performed. Terrible. Which was just miserable to watch. It was miserable to sit through. Okay. This week, I thought much more of a watchable product, much more of an enjoyable product from the Texas teams. I thought A and M played pretty darn well against Auburn. Mm-hmm. I thought Texas played pretty darn well against Kansas State, at least offensively. The surprise of the nation. Hoot. Those rice owls. That's what <laughs> happens when rice plays. They lift all boats. Uh, rice <laughs> stuns 21 Marshall, number 21 Marshall, on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, they shut them out. I thought Baylor's defense played really well. Mm-hmm. I thought TCU played really well overall in their upset win over Oklahoma State. And so, this is, I think that that is, that is really nice. Now, look, we're going into the final week of the regular season this week. What trend holds up? Will we have pretty football? Will we have ugly football? That kind of remains to be seen. But as as far as compared to last week, I don't think there's any doubt about it that the college football landscape in Texas is Overall, in a much better, better place today than it was a week ago today. Mm-hmm. Thought number three, the oddest week, the cruelest round. Yeah. So we mention this every year whenever uh, this comes to this time of year, whenever I, I come on Monday morning follow-up, and I say the same thing. Which is, this is the cruelest round of the playoffs. Emotions. Because all 12 of the semifinals, so all 24 of the semifinalists, are this close. They're all 48 minutes away. And, by the way, I know I'm a broken record to people who watch the show, but if you make it to a title game... You go in the record books. Mm-hmm. You are remembered. Even if it goes terribly for you, okay? I can tell you... So I've been here since 2011. I think I can tell you every team that's pl- that I've seen play in a title yeah. game. Okay? I was like, like, a prime example is last year. Richmond Springs and Molly County. They got 45. And I can still you tell you that like that. You I know? go back to 2018. When Mart, lost to Gro- when Mart beat Groover. Mm-hmm. And Groover really did not play well. And I think you talk Coach Terry Filter, I'll tell you we just didn't play well, right? Mm-hmm. Got kind of run off the field. I remember Groover. Right. I remember Bowling making it to a title game. Mm-hmm. I remember um, uh, Yoakum making it to a title game. Right. I make. I remember these teams that, uh, like, of course, Cannon Mildred, right, with Nick Sheminek. I remember those teams. But if you, I could not tell you who, who those teams played. beat in the semifinals. Mm-mm. No idea. I can't. I can't. And that's not, that, to me, represents a new pressure for these kids because if you win this week you're remembered forever Mm -hmm. now uh, across the state if you lose this week you're remembered in town but that's it might be it but it's odd because normally this is this is also i think going to be an extremely strange week of games because of what's happening in the big schools Mm -hmm. because in 6a and 5a it's the first round of the playoffs we're starting over we're starting over for them. We're starting the Texas High School playoffs this week, the first round of the 6A and 5A playoffs. And so as a result, you will have these like two different kinds of emotions, right? You will have Galena Park North Shore going out there and playing Deer Park. And I'm going to be honest, I think North Shore is going to win that game, right? That's going to be a first round playoff game. You're also going to have Canadian and Gunner Part 5 in like a high stakes, high emotion game. Mm-hmm. That contrast is not something we've seen in Texas high school football literally ever. So we're in uncharted territory right now. This is going to be a strange week. And next week, by the way, it's going to be even stranger. Mm-hmm. It's going to be even stranger. So it's just going to be a different kind of week in the Texas high school football world. Those are my three big thoughts. Three helmet stickers. A helmet sticker. Let's talk kickers. Graham yes. Kicker Chandler Dyer. He kicked a 45-yard field goal, which was a school record, and then he followed it up with the game-winning field goal as Graham took down Salina in the Region 1 final in 4 Division 2. They're through to the state semifinals. Um, and that was a game, by the way, that Graham basically won entirely, excuse me, entirely based 
on their special teams. They returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown, mm-hmm. and then they had a a game winning field goal. So it's like they bookended it with big special right. teams plays. So helmet sticker for Graham kicker Chandler Dyer. A helmet sticker for Texas running back Bijan Robinson. That kid balled out. Uh, finally let him loose. Nine carries, 172 yards, and three touchdowns for Bajan Robinson. Um, Rashawn Johnson also had 139 yards and three touchdowns in Texas's big win over Kansas State. And a helmet sticker for Killeen Harker Heights running back Rashawn Sanford. 36 carries, 327 yards, and two touchdowns rushing in Harker Heights' playoff clinching win. Over Belton last week. Congratulations to Harker Heights and Rashawn Sanford. A helm sticker for you. Three teams to watch. The Lindale Eagles are into their first ever state semifinal with their big win last week over Kilgore. Th- that offense is something ridiculous at this point. Um, they have scored in the playoffs. Let me look this up. The things Coach Cochran is doing over there is it's just, amazing. I mean, it's, it's astronomical. Amazing. It's, 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 re- it's remarkable. They have scored in the playoffs. They scored 56. They scored uh, this week. Yeah, they scored 36 the week before. They scored 70 the week before. I mean, they have been on an absolute heater offensively. And, you know, a lot of it, I think a lot of people are are going to point, uh, understandably so, to Jordan Jenkins. But that's a whole team effort. That whole team is really humming right now. And they get a big game this week in the state semifinals against Austin LBJ. You be quiet. Are we just going to have a jam session real fast? Uh, Texas A&M. A&M stays in the playoff hunt. I'll say this. They're doing what they need to. That was a lot better. They needed some uh, some better style points and to go on the road and mm-hmm. beat a team convincingly, 31-20. It was not always convincing. No. But it but was. But the moment they in, turned it on. But that fourth quarter, they flipped the switch, mm-hmm. and they and they turned it into a convincing win. I thought Kellen Mond was really sharp. They got a nice game from Isaiah Spiller, and that defense continued to, to make the plays they needed to. I didn't think they were spectacular, but they were good enough to stay in the playoff race. Uh, a big game coming up this week. I mean, they're all big games at this point, but uh, a big game coming up this week against Ole Miss. And helmet sticker. I'm sorry, for uh, teams to watch. Let's talk about Texas School for the Deaf. Yeah. Texas School for the Deaf, the Rangers down there, are into a state championship game for the first time in program history, which is remarkable considering they are they've they've been in a title game as an eleven man school. This is their first year as a six man school. Hmm. They are playing in their first year as a six man team school. They are into the state championship game in Taps Division One, thanks uh, in large part to their coach John Moore and what they've been able to do there. Pretty remarkable thing there for the Rangers. So keep an eye on the Texas school for the deaf. Three to see. It's Canadian v Gunner Part Five. Volume 5, if you will. Um, 4 o'clock sat Friday at uh, Anthony Field in Abilene. And if, it has, if it's going to follow any sort of, you know, recent trend, it's going to be a banger. It's, I, yep. think, I think with all due respect to Franklin and, Buff, or Franklin and Wascombe, which is another interesting game, by the way, a rematch of the 2015 title game mm-hmm. that ended at 1 and 30 in the morning at NRGC. With all due respect to them, I think Canadian Gunner is probably number one. For, it's number one versus number two in our rankings. Let's right. put it that way. Yeah. So th- that's that's all you need to know from that po- perspective. But figures to be uh, another banger. How about Louisiana Tech at TCU in a hastily thrown together um, matchup? Yeah. What was la- end mm-hmm. of last end of last week? week? They all decided to get together and play this game, a final non non conference game for for TCU. And so t- TCU picks up a game this week. They will take on Louisiana Tech. And if you're looking for a first-round matchup in the big schools, a little bit of a hipster pick. May I direct you to seven o'clock Friday at Memorial Stadium in Port Arthur? Yeah, Port Arthur Memorial, undefeated, looking very good, taking on Fort Ben Marshall, who is probably the best four seed in the playoffs. Fort Ben Marshall, I'm sorry, Fort Ben Hightower rather. Fort Ben Hightower is a very dangerous team. Okay, so mm-hmm. if you're looking for maybe an upset special, keep an eye on Fort Ben Hightower and Port Arthur Memorial. That is Monday morning fallout. 